most famous special. It was a local guy. I used to come here a, a bunch. I, I, you know, I was, I partied on the strip. You know, the great food, great drinks, great times at movies. It was had by all. This is our walk-in cooler where we keep our ice cream. Can't go to a house without finding them in the cupboard. I, I knew Quattro's the way that most students knew Quattro's before I started managing them. Hey Salukis, welcome to another episode of Saluki Sleuths. This time, we're working our way down the Carbondale Strip, getting the inside scoop on favorite foods that have fueled Salukis for decades. Much has changed, some is still the same, and there's one local favorite that's making a major comeback. There's a pretty good stage up here. Um, these tables here, we are um, having local artists paint the tabletops. Great food, great times, great drinks at Boobies. The Sandwich King of Carbondale is making a comeback. Um, we're going to bring back a lot of the old stuff down to, you know, the, the original beers and stuff that was served here and the original menus and the original sandwiches. When SIU grad Abe Traverso bought the building that used to house Boobies, he had no idea how quickly the community would rally behind the sandwich shop's revival. Yeah, it's been totally overwhelming um, in a good way. And uh, and and um, it's 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 been the thing that's pushed me along because sometimes, you know, as I'm I mean, this is a complete gut renovation from the ground up. As Abe moves forward with renovations, he's got a special advisor on hand. My name's Joe Frick. I was here from 1983 to 1992. Well, there's a lot of good memories, the best 10 years of my life. Made so many contacts, met a lot of people from SIU, had a lot of wonderful people working for me, you know. Former Boobies owner Joe Frick is helping Abe stay true to the original Boobies menu. Well, there was people that worked here, a lot of those sandwiches were named after. Plus, they're all registered trademarks, too, you know. So, I mean, there was a guy, I think, by the name of McBride, which was ham, turkey, and Swiss. And the Tyrolean, that was named after somebody. Then, of course, you know where the booby come from. Then you got the Bruce, the Harvey, and the Hirsch special. That was the father. That's what they call him was Hirsch. Joe says the original boobies was started by a father and son duo from Chicago. And I think Bob, the son, went to school at SIU. Then the father owned a car dealership up there. Well, he moved to Cardinbell, too, and then I guess they come up with the idea of opening the deli. I'm trying to um, do it, uh, do boobies how it was done in the past, but bring it a little bit into 2023. So, you know, just mi minor changes, minor tweaks to the menus, minor tweaks to, uh, uh, you know, drink menus and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's going to be the same. Most importantly, the original sign will be back on display. With the community being so much behind me, it is, uh, is inspired me to keep on going. Further down the street, an ice cream icon still stands. Hi, my name is Mark Wachikoski. I'm the owner of the Big Chill, formerly the Dairy Queen. I graduated from SIU in 1979. Mark Wachikowski is a legend on the Carbondale Strip. His family has served Carbondale ice cream for more than five decades. My father took over this place in 1966, so I've grown up here. Um, I went to school at SIU. And then after I graduated, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. And then after a couple of years, I decided to take over. So I've been in charge of this place since 1982. The ice cream shop made it through the riots in the 70s and wild Carbondale Halloween celebrations. But its biggest turmoil hit in the summer of 2023 when Dairy Queen Corporate decided to end the local franchise in Carbondale. The iconic sign had to come down. You know, once the change happened, the community support and alumni support has just been unreal. We did a lighting of the Dairy Queen sign for the last time. There were a couple people that came in from Seattle and Arizona for that. I mean, it, it, and I talked to so many people that night, it meant so much to them. The change and a new name has allowed Mark to reflect on just how much this ice cream shop has meant to Carbondale. The shop has watched generations of Salukis grow up. It's different than any other ice cream shop, you know, that people go to. This is an old style walk up. I mean, it's got the nostalgia, you know, it brings people here. You know, they just sit out on the wall and just watching people, talking to people. This building is the same building that's been here since 1951 is when it was built. 
And that's not the only thing that's been around longer than current students have been alive. This is our walk-in cooler where we keep our ice cream and everything, our toppings and everything cold. It's the original one from 1951. It's wood and it's done great for us. Over the decades, the former Dairy Queen has traditionally been a gathering spot for all things a little wild in Carbondale. Back, I guess it was about 1980, um, NBC had a show called The Road Show. They went to a different place every week, and so they came here for Halloween, and they uh, um, sent their camera crew, and they uh, contacted me to put their camera crew on top of the building to shoot the things. And uh, the star that was uh, here, you know, hosting the show was uh, John Candy. Even in tough times, Salukis have always had a soft spot for the place where they get their soft serve. During the riots of 69, there was a lot of damage done to downtown Carbondale. There were only two building, two businesses downtown Carbondale that didn't get windows broke. Dairy Queen was one of them, and we're all windows. I mean, it's just, it, this place means a lot to a lot of people, and they just take care of it. Salukis know what goes well with ice cream, and that would be their choice of Carbondale pizza. We head over to Quattro's Pizza, where deep pan deliciousness is served up daily. We spoke with the late owner, Blake Morrison, who passed away not long after this interview. We honor his memory and dedication to not just Quattro's, but the entire Carbondale community. Blake's hard work and kindness shines on. My name is Blake Morrison. I am an SIU graduate of 2018, uh, and I am the owner of Quattro's Pizza. Blake loved Quattro's long before he became owner in 2022. I was the I was the, the stereotypical, you know, in on a Wednesday night, getting a large taco pizza and a couple of pitchers of beer, you know. Uh, I, I knew Quattro's the way most students knew Quattro's before I started managing here. Quattro's is a frequent stop for alumni, especially those who haven't visited in a while. I think there's just a little bit of a... Uh, something that people love about, I can't get this anywhere else, and there's the nostalgia, there's the, it brings them back to their college days, but it also is just a unique style of pizza that you can't get anywhere else. We asked Blake about the legendary Quattro's Cups that have become a cupboard staple for pretty much every family in Carbondale. Carbondale's fine China, right? Blake says the cups were started by the former owner, Steve Payne, in the 1970s as a marketing tool to help Quattro's get on the map. Somebody told me that they went to Mexico and saw another person with a Quattro's Cup and had to go up to them and say, is that a Quattro's Cup? They, they met in Mexico over Quattro's. A student today can go to Quattro's and still order the same pizza that their grandparents and parents did when they went to SIU. The Quattro's challenge is the original. That's the uh, pepperoni sausage, mushroom, onion, green pepper, extra cheese. I think back in the day that was all the toppings he had. I just hope that when they take that bite of pizza that it, it is bringing back that memory. It is the pizza that they loved 20, 30, 40 years ago. It is the uh, bringing them back to their college days as well and remembering the days of partying and studying and whatever else they got up to. Many alumni will remember their Italian Village experience and leaving their mark on the wall. Italian Village got started in 1960 as a restaurant that primarily served SIU students. Over time, it's become a favorite for local families as well. The restaurant is full of memorabilia, old pictures, and messages from Saluki's past. A little further down the strip, a fellow Carbondale Italian favorite, Polly's Pizza, commonly referred to as Pags. My name is Melissa Parsons, and I'm president of Polly's Pizza, owner. Um, I'm a 91 graduate. Pags Pizza has been a family affair since the late 60s. It started back in 68, December of 68. Dad opened up. It was at 515 South Illinois, and we moved here about 13 years ago to 509 South Illinois. Well, we started small in 68. We were just one side of a building, and then we expanded um, over time, and we just served pizza. And um, there was such a strong demand at the time for pizza. It was a growing market. We get alumni that come back, and their first thing out of their yeah, they're like, where's the window? We're famous for that 
slice window late at night. And that's what they remember, sitting outside on the curb and having that SIU experience. For many Salukis, the Joe's Special is still their go-to order. The Joe's Special has been around since the 80s. We asked Melissa about that pizza and learned it was named after a real person. Joe's Special is our most famous special. It was a local guy. Um, he, back, we used to have our delivery cars. We used to own our own delivery cars. This was the man that repaired them. And he came in, he always get a Joe's Special with green peppers on it. Like many restaurants that have been open in Carbondale for decades, PAGS holds on to its history. These are our original brick ovens, and these are the original ones. The, one, the far two right ones are the ones we started with in 68. Food does a great job of bringing people together. In Carbondale, the longtime restaurants are places where Salukis celebrate their biggest moments or maybe console themselves after their biggest trials. These walls are still standing and have seen a lot, gladly. Oh, we're honored. We're absolutely honored and humbled by it, you know, and it just shows how close the relationship becomes, you know, in four years or however long it takes for people to get through school, you know, that closeness, you know, it's a friendship. You know, I love talking to alumni. They come back and everything's different. You know, they come back, you know, SIU has changed so much. Downtown Carbondale has changed so much. But this is still looking the same. It's still the same place. And, you know, it, so it evokes so many memories of, of their time here. That wraps up another edition of Saluki Sleuths. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to the restaurant owners who took the time to share their stories for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it and hope you make a visit back to town real soon. Until next time, go dogs!